Welcome on Makosi Network. Welcome to the channel, guys. Chiefs lose to Cape Town City. And it is what I told you. Matt will definitely play in this game because Mulefin by Hook or Crook will make sure Matt plays. Please subscribe to the channel, guys. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. What do we think of the game? Yazi, today I'm going to tell you something, guys. And you guys, I've been telling you guys this for a long time. And you guys are like, believe in the coach, believe in the coach. We got outcoached. We got outplayed by Eric Tinkler. Let me tell you. Let me tell you how the game sets up. Eric Tinkler starts the game. And when you look at the starting lineup, you're like, where's Hoderman? Uh, where's Rhodes? Uh, these are the quick players that we thought he's going to start with. No, Eric Tinkler didn't start with them. Eric Tinkler started with the, uh, a strategy of containing Chiefs, etc. So what you saw that when Chiefs was playing, Chiefs had the ball. Chiefs was looked like they were dominant, what, what, but they were not dominant in the with the ball where it mattered. They were dominant at the halfway line. But when they got to the final third, Cape Town City would pounce. When they got to the final third, Cape Town City would pounce. So Eric Tinkler made sure Guti, the Chiefs is going to struggle with Ukanyi Samayo in uh in uh counter attacks but in terms of the ball they like they can have the ball and try do their things but they don't have creative midfielders in the team so we don't have to stress because they have Matt Mteto and Castillo these guys they are fine but they are not creative they don't unlock defenses they are just uh, energy players they don't really think of of the ball like a real like player who can think and outplay um, people so he gave these guys the ball. And a lot of you, one thing I'll tell you. 36 minutes, Darren Kidd goes down. 36 minutes, Darren Kidd goes down. He fakes an injury. Tinkler brings the team on because they were playing very slow. And then he, Tinkler tells them, okay, guys, now we've contained them for 36 minutes. Now let's change the pace. Now, guys, press them from the back. Then Cape Town City it starts again. Cape Town City presses Chiefs from the back. Now Chiefs is no longer able to play. Why? It's getting closer to half time. So they want Chiefs to stop playing now. They don't want Chiefs to get that last goal. So they press Chiefs towards half uh, half time. They press, 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 press. Chiefs is struggling. Chiefs is just now kicking from the back. They're losing the ball, etc., etc. So it goes into Eric Tinkler's plan. Half time, Eric Tinkler brings on the PC players because he knows now. Kaiser Chiefs is tired. They were running for days thinking that they were doing something and they were running like headless chickens. He brings on the first boys, Abo Rose, Abo Hudeman, and they start playing. They start go doing um, proper counters, proper counters, proper counters, and eventually they get the ball, the, the goal. Now, this is what I'm, I've been saying. Coaching, coaching. Molifintziki and Atharzwani are reactive players. I always say, why do they have to wait 60th minute to make a sub? Why didn't they make a sub at 45 minutes? 45 minutes, they were meant to uh, start bringing changes, bring Dolly, uh, because Saile was off, um, uh, Modi was off, even Dupree was off. I don't care who says what. Dupree has pace, so Dupree will always beat someone. But he was off. He didn't look like he was in the game. His body language was off. He just didn't look like himself. Dupree was off and I was like, okay. You see, Eric Tinkler figured the Chiefs out like, hundred, like, mwah, like, you know, like a perfect, perfect. Eric Tinkler outplayed Ataswani and Nzeki. Two people. Let me tell you how crazy it is. Eric Tinkler... Eric Tinkler's assistant coach is Lebohang Manyama, who has no experience. That means that Eric Tinkler is making these decisions, one man. And he outthought a Molifin Tsiki and a, coach, a player, who, a personal coach, he achieves in Athaswa. Two! He outthought two players, two coaches. He outthought two coaches, one man. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Today's game is coaching, guys. If you wanted to, if you want to see perfection of coaching that Eric Tinkler did today, Cape Town City played three different teams. In the first half, they played a slow and composed players um, who were just consolidating, consolidating. Half time, they brought fast players. That's team number two. They brought fast players, fast players, and then they scored the goal. They changed the team a third time. Then they brought in defensive players with Mark Van Heerden, et etc. et cetera, to consolidate the game. Three teams, three, three, meaning good. That was plan A, plan B, and plan C from Eric Tinkler as a coach who is trying to win the game. 
Mwile Fensike had no plan B. Mwile Fensike's plans are players. He does not have a plan. He doesn't change formation. He doesn't change how he play. Why do I say this? In the second half, when it was Mteto, Castillo and Matt, we lost creativity. We were just going from left to right. Left to right. Left to right. But there was we weren't penetrating Cape Town City. Why? Because Matt, Mteto and Castillo play the exact same way. They play exact same way. There were so many moments Matt got the ball. And instead of instead of turning and facing the, the keeper, Matt decided to go or change play or pass back, etc. And this is the worst thing. Worst thing of the game. How we considered the goal. We considered the goal, the way Mudao scored against us, Mudao scored against us, the way Peter Shalulili scored against us, and now Kanisa Mayo. All these players have scored goals to, uh, in, in consecutive games. Consecutive games, they have beat us the exact same way, meaning that Keza Chiefs in training does not train fix their mistakes. Clanty has been making this exact mistake how many games? Then next game, we put in Dove. Dove makes the exact same mistake. How, guys? Why is it always the left backs? Like, it's always the... You know, if you, if you guys watch this goal, actually, this goal that Cape Town City scored, it is exactly the same as the Peter Shalul. Exactly. Why do I say exactly? Uh, Ribeiro and Sundowns got the ball. He tried to cross. It hit Frostler's legs and went back to Ribeiro. Ribeiro got the ball. He crossed. It gets Shalulile back post. Clanty is late. Uh, he just heads it down goal. This goal same. Uh, Saile comes. They kick the ball. It hits Saile's legs. It goes back to the player. The player crosses the ball. Back post. Dove is late. Misjudges the ball. Goes to uh, Kanisa Mayo. Goal. Exactly the same exactly the same carbon cop you know when i say carbon copy i mean like yo like exactly guys exactly the same it is way <laughs> ah chips guys chips is the most useless team in the world and uh, when i say useless i'm like we don't have coaches i god now we do not have coaches we don't coaching is not a chiefs and i've been telling people i've been telling people with the is not a coach guys how do we make the same mistake for how many games how many games have we been making this mistake sundowns we've done it twice we got kicked out of mtn8 um and then and now uh, super sport is doing it to us all the time people score against chiefs in the, at the back post with their left back like it is like crazy guys like it's like there's so many things I saw of this game and I was like, oh, the coaching at Chiefs is so bad. These guys, at halftime, why don't they make substitutions? Like, the team that was in the first half was predictable to Cape Town City. Cape Town City found Chiefs very predictable. And this is another crazy stat I want to tell you. The player with the most shots at goal is Njabulo Ngob. Not Dupree, not the Ranga, not Modi, not uh, Dolly, who even actually had better chances. It is Unjabulo Un 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 had the best chances of the game. Best, best chances of the game. It is crazy to think a defender played better than the strikers. But he doesn't know how to be a striker. So that's why he misses. Saile cannot head her to save his life. Saile, this is the second... This is a lack of coaching. If Saile always gets headers and he keeps making mistakes, what does that tell you? In training, he does not train these things. He expects that miracles will happen in games. Saile has missed so many header tap-ins. Like this... Let, let, me, let me actually refresh your guys' memory. Last season, I forgot the game we were playing. Saile... Did a diving header and he missed the goal completely. Saile missed two headers last season in a game, a very important game. I forgot if it was a cup game or what. And he dived and he missed two. Like what he's doing this season, he was doing last season, which is the funny part because I'm I'm laughing now because I'm like, how can players be making the same mistakes? Dupree. Decision making is a last season problem. But this season, his decision making is so poor. Like he will beat a man, you like to pre-cross. No, he wants to run dot dot. He arrives inside the, the goal post. I'm like, 
Dupree, when you beat a man and you just need a square pass, why don't you pass? Another thing, Darren Kitt was grabbing all the balls in the air. Meaning when Cheese was doing crosses in the air, uh, Darren Kitt was grabbing them. So I was like, so why does Cheese not do crosses on the ground? Like crosses on the ground. Because Darren Kitt is beating our tall players because our crossing is not good. Our crossing, and this is what I, this is what I said beginning of the season. I said, Chiefs has the tallest he has, has one of the tallest teams in the league, but they don't practice set pieces. Their set pieces is Dolly going to the corner, is Dupree going to the corner, and just crossing. But it's predictable to the teams. The teams know you're going to do that. Why don't they do a, a short corner? Why don't they do a short corner, etc., and try and make, take a different angle? You know, you know what? I, you know, Chiefs, Chiefs legs coaching. Oh, it is terrible. Like, our soccer is terrible. And this is going to be how we want to play for the rest of the season. If we have Muli Fintiki and others one. This is how we're going to play the rest of the season. There's going to be an up. We're going to win one game. We're going to be like, oh, we look fine. Then there's going to... But even the games we win, it's never convincing. It's never convincing. We never win and we are happy inside. And we're like, yeah, today we beat that team 100%. We win. And I, it's like I was saying last game. When we beat Sukukun, everyone was happy. I was like, guys, how did we beat Sukukun? Because we didn't beat them by us creating these chances. See, Kukuna was doing dumb things in that game. They were passing us. The keeper passed us the ball. We scored. So I'm like, Chiefs did not create their chances against the Kukuna. It was basically Sukukuna giving us a chance. Hey, guys, let me let me tell you one thing. I will say what you want to. We will say what we want to say about Matt. I'll always say this: if you have Mtetwa in the field. You don't need Matt. If you have Mteto on the field, we should have rather started Dolly in this game. If Dolly gets tired 60th minute, take him out and bring him someone else. Mteto and Matt are the same player. Yes, they are good defensively. So you will feel Matt's presence defensively. But when you need him in attack, he is not there. Yes, he was slightly better. But guys, what do we want? Do we want a defensive uh, midfielder? Who can't attack, or do we want an attacking player? Why would we need? No, I Mtetwa. Let's if, if I have to rate Mtetwa's game today, it was okay. He lost a couple of balls, but he grew in confidence as the, the game started. He was shaky, but he grew in confidence. He was carrying the ball more, he was becoming more relaxed, etc. So he started doing well. Matt was doing well to pro to in defense, but in attack. Dololo, he was nothing in attack. In attack, Matt was so useless and bad. Uh, Castillo, same story. Castillo in attack was bad. Castillo was just the, You know why? Let me tell you how Mulefintiki functions. Mulefintiki, the only reason he kept Castillo in the game is because he was hoping that Castillo will score ahead. But the teams already planned for Castillo. They were like, Castillo is only going to come here for headers. Because that's the only thing he's good for at Chiefs now at these days, is to make late runs and headers. And I'm like, it's so easy to plan for Castillo, guys. Like, it's so easy to plan for Castillo. Because Castillo is not creative as you would like him to be in the middle because he always isolates himself on the sides. He never does deep runs in the middle, etc. So he on, he only seems like the best player because he, he pops up in the box. But then, I, and another thing, let me say the Ranga thing. So also Dupree, when I, I hear a lot of people want Dupree to play on the wings. And I've been saying this. I say this. I say Dupree cannot play on the wings. When he plays on the wings, he gets isolated. And when he gets isolated, it's a problem because he is not effective. He is very is not effective at all. And he just does dumb things on the side because he's not built for that. So Dupree is being used the way they're using him is very poor. And I and, and it's coaching, guys. If you want Dupree to play on the side, don't put him in the middle some games and then put him on the just train him to be on the side. Say, this is what you do. When you're in this position, do this. When you're in this position, do this. Because 
Sometimes his decision making is very poor and he gets himself isolated. And sometimes you ask yourself, can the ways to pray win these chances? Uh, another player that I, I, I want to add, like I can honestly go on and on about this game until I die. But yo, this game was terrible, guys, to watch. Like, yo, it was terrible. This game just showed you that Jesus players, but no coaching. No coaching whatsoever. Like, there's dollar or coaching. I don't know what more you guys wanted to see to know that there is no coaching. Mulefinziki did not know what to do. Like, Eric Tinkler, I thought this guy so badly that Mulefinziki and others were locked. They thought they were. You know what's the funny part about this game? Uh, towards the 30th minute, Molefinsik and Adazwane were so confident that they were in control of the game. And as I was watching the game, I was like, I, why is this game so slow? Chiefs is not picking up the pace. Why is the game so slow? And then I realized, no, man. Eric Tinkler slowed down this game on purpose. And the question I asked myself is why? Why did Eric Tinkler slow down this game? Because he didn't make it fast paced he he basically just launched the text to Kanye Samayo and his midfield didn't join Kanye Samayo like they usually do they just kicked it to him and then they just left to Kanye Samayo to deal with them then they let key chiefs come back then I asked myself why then you saw good no it's the plan they allow chiefs to get tired and have the ball and then they pounce they pounce and then they take advantage of chiefs dumb mistakes Hey guys, it was a terrible game. And one thing I'll say is this. Darren Kidd won man of the match. But let's be honest with ourselves. What shot, what are the shots that like were worthy of this guy winning man of the match? This guy won man of the match, but all of the shots that were to him were basically like straight to him. Like it wasn't like dangerous shots because they contained Chiefs. Chiefs was useless today. Like I don't care who says what you, you we we were thinking we're playing nice football, but we're playing into a strategy that Eric Tinkler did. Eric Tinkler allowed us to play today in the first half. Second half, he stopped all of that. Actually, the 36th minute, he stopped all that when he made Darren Kidd fake an injury. The team regrouped, the Chiefs stopped playing. Right there, he was like, okay, Chiefs, now you no longer play. So yeah, guys, that, is, that was the game. Obvious substitutions, we always make late substitutions. They want to make substitutions. We're losing, but they're making uh, substitutions 80th minute. And you know their favorite player, Matt. Matt will never leave the game. He loves Matt too much. And yeah, and one thing I'll say, this is one thing I picked up. Uh, and I've been saying this for weeks. Is that because Ranga plays out of position and they make him go too deep, etc. They don't, Chiefs does not play to benefit Ranga. And the reason why I'm saying this, if you watch how Cape Town City play, Cape Town City play to benefit Kanisa Mayo. They know Kanisa Mayo is their focal point. So they make the game benefit Kanisa Mayo. They make the game and the players feed off Kanisa Mayo's runs, etc. But Chiefs does not do that for Ranga. Chiefs tries to get wingers to create, but our wingers can't create. We try to make our, let me tell you, our most creative players, we try to be uh, refrostler. And Dove Warm. I mean, not Dove, Emerson Dove. Why, why, why do you want your left back and your right back to be the most creative players in the park? Because when uh, Dove and um, Reeve uh, look the most creative, you already know something is wrong because it means that Castillo and Matt are not doing something. Because Dove and Frosler had most of the ball, but they didn't know what to do with the ball because it was isolated. So we had no creativity in the middle. And that is Chiefs, guys. That is Chiefs in a, a nutshell. But when I go back quickly to Ranga, that last chance that Ranga got, and then he didn't pass Dupree. Let me tell you something now, guys. Ranga is no longer going to come back on that bench. Ranga will not come. They're going to shout at him and ask him, Guti, why did he not pass Dupree? And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why Ranga did not pass Dupree. Because it was the first chance Ranga got to take a shot at goal 
in the whole game. It was the first proper chance he got. So he decided that he's going to take it because no one is creating for him. So if no one creates for you, what is going to happen? You're going to take the first chance you get and you're going to do Nyoso. And obviously he did Nyoso because he just had to pass to pre. That was the only job he had to do. Pass to pre, to pre as a one-on-one. Probably will miss, but now we don't know. And that's what happened, guys. And this thing of starting Saile, I what is wrong with this? What is wrong with Molivinzi? Why do you start? We've been telling you, but don't start Saile. Do not start Saile. Saile is an impact player. He cannot start the game. Why start Saile? I, you know, Molivinzi is is not a coach. It's finished. Molivinzi is not a coach. We will not win anything this season. In this league, we are going to be crying the whole season. We do not have coaches. We don't have anything. Anything. Anything whatsoever. Hey, subscribe. This is your Chiefs.